morning morning welcome to another edition of the destination fantasy podcast once again i'm with my brother from another mother to shine how you doing this morning man? I, I feel pretty good bro how about yourself i'm doing excellent i'm excited this is you know the last sunday in may meaning i you know to me when uh when we cross june once we get into june it is officially mock mock draft season yeah, yeah. that's what it is for me yeah buddy and i i know you like to start like 20 minutes after the first round of the NFL draft. And all <laughs> but, but you know, the consensus is as soon as we get to June, you know, we, we mock drafting. But today, special treat, uh, we're going to start a week early. We, we, we're going to get into uh, what we call draft strategies. And so, you know, we got this in the possibly two or three parts, uh, but definitely it's going to be more than one. Um, and so... You know, we had the NFL draft, OTAs are happening. Uh, eventually next month is going to be training camp. And then the following, we get three preseason games and bam, we we right in there. So before you know it, it's going to be time for week one. And so just just out of curiosity, so you, you've done a number of leagues over the years. Um, at this point, I'm pretty sure you, perf- you kind of perfected how you want to draft. Once you find out where you're drafting, how many teams in your league, who who's in your league, so so just for a, 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 a just a basic like you know you know draft situation, um, so like how what's your approach, Deshaun, when you you know get prepared for an actual draft? Like what do, what do you do? What tactics do you take? Uh, what's your strategy? So. I mean, basically, like my tactics are um, first and foremost, in a lot of leagues, you really don't know where you're picking, right? Um, in some leagues, you do know where you're picking. So um, just like our main league, Jamar, we know exactly where we're going to pick. So sometimes I may mock prior, you know, maybe a week prior towards me drafting so I can know exactly, you know, like how my team would be able to line up. And, you know, with that with that being being said, I like to write down – you know, maybe the top 10 players at every position. Like I like I legit have it right down. Like my thoughts upon like the top players um in every position. I like to land at least one of those guys and definitely two players in every position um in the top 20. That has been a um a method of mine that um gave me great success over the years. And you can attest to that formula, uh Jamar. Um, and, you know, it differs um, as far as like a standard league quarterback. You know, it, it, it doesn't necessarily apply to that one as far as quarterbacks go. Like you can just have like a top 10 quarterback. You really don't need another top 20 quarterback for that league. Just someone who can um, pretty much like stand in and, you know, fill in that guy's role for like bye weeks and things of that nature. And and that's another thing, uh, bro. Like we can even sit here and talk about bye weeks for a little bit. Um, you never want to drop multiple players with the same bye week. Like, and I cannot stress that one enough because, man, like that'll get you in the hole really, really quick. So, I mean, it's just a number of things that I can do. Um, one of the most important things that I, I see a lot of people touch base on are is the ability to be able to cuff, to handcuff. You got an injury prone player, um, you know, you definitely want to add like a handcuff. Like a perfect example of that would be a Jonathan Taylor and a Naeem Hines, Jamar. So if I am going to draft a Jonathan Taylor, who is spectacular, by the way, um, right. Naeem Hines is a great counterpart to that. So I would try to look to add him in like the later round of the draft, just in case he's going to get hurt or something like that. Handcuffing is really a big deal, especially for like those injury uh, players. But it's definitely a number of things that I do when I prep um, for my first uh, fantasy draft. Understood. I mean, that, that is some good info right there. Um, you know, give me a second because another special treat, you know, since we're talking about this, let's, uh, you know, actually, you know, walk the walk and actually mock draft. So give me one second. Let me get this together. All right. So. All right, so you you know, 
as far as, you know, drafting, it all depends on, you know, your league, the setup. So basically the number of teams in your league, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, even 18, um, you know, how the lineup is set. You know, a lot of a lot of the standard lineups is one quarterback, two running backs, uh, two wide receivers, sometimes three wide receivers in the lineup, a tight end, a flex spot, kicker, and a defense slash special teams. That's that's normally what it is. And so, honestly, it all depends, uh, you know, the personnel in your league, you know, depending if you know the people or not. And if you know the people, you kind of know, you know, for the most part, who, who they would draft and who, yep. who they wouldn't. Um, you know, also, you know, where you're drafting at, that, that is very key because uh, it because uh, it depends on – where you're drafting at depends on the basically the type of strategy you want to use. So – we, we would definitely get more in depth to it. So I'm picking third in this mock draft, and I believe Deshaun is picking eighth. I am. So we're basically on the opposite ends. And this is a 10 team, you know, basic uh, PPR, which is a new standard nowadays points per reception. Uh, if it's a true standard, you, uh, basically every time a person catches the ball, there's no additional points there. So basically, in a, in a re- true traditional standard league, um, you definitely want players that are touchdown, heavy touchdown dependent, that are basically more prone to scoring touchdowns than not. That that's would be a bread and butter. In a in a PPR, you you have more flexibility because basically it's all about more so value and targets that that'll separate you from the rest. All right, so I think we only have three of us that's actually human in here. So we'll probably end up mock drafting again. And so I know that you really like this guy, so I'm going to take him in there. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be a fool not to if he still had three, bro. Indeed. Oh, yes. That's what I'm talking about. So who you thinking? Ezekiel Elliott, right? Oh. Negative. <laughs> <laughs> a guy that I'm high on uh, this year, Jonathan Taylor. Special. Special guy. So I'm going to combat that with the league's wide receiver leader from last year and Stephon Diggs. So that's a pretty good one-two punch so far, Jamar. Indeed it is. Um, You know what? I already got a very solid running back. One, I'm going to go with a top 10 wide out here. I'm going to go A.J. Brown. Mm. I definitely think he got top five potential written all over him this year. And, I mean, maybe they add El Julio Jones to that. I've been hearing things up in the water. If they do, that, man, that combo would be lethal, bro. My gosh. That's that's two monsters. Right Basically, there. yeah. And I think A.J. Brown actually looks up to Julio, so it makes it even that much better. They got the same jersey number. Right. Oh, Ooh. they just picked Justin Jefferson. That would have been a great pick right there. Hmm. Let's see, I got a good problem to have. So normally wide receivers are, you know, they come a dime a dozen. And I definitely would love to take Allen Robinson here. But I'm going to go, I'm going to actually go with uh, Antonio Gibson here. Ah, oh, good pick. Oh, man. Okay, so that's tough. So, so as of right now, I'm kind of in like a tough spot. Um, I got a J.K. Dobbins, uh, Clyde Edwards, um, Elaire, um, a couple of guys who are young but still get they still have like a lot to prove. And then you got the just the guy right there in Chris Carson, who you know is our basically regular RB two there. Like he's the, the epitome of what an RB two is. So, I mean, and then you got David Montgomery there as well. So. I got 12 seconds. I am going to roll a dice here, and I am going to pick J.K. Dobbins. I'm, I really don't feel great about the pick, especially since I had David Montgomery sitting there. Hmm. Who are you thinking on the turnaround? Uh, I am right now at this point, I am looking to see if I still have an elite tight end, and there are two left. Um, who can basically still play a wide receiver role. And I'm going to go with Darren Waller here. That is a solid 
very solid pick. All right, so as of right now, I got Dalvin Cook and Antonio Gibson, so my starting backfield is set here. Let me see. So the true elite tight ends are already gone, but we still have some pretty good wide receivers here. Yes, you do. And again, I think we mentioned it, Jamar, upon multiple occasions that mm -hmm. that's why I went and picked an elite tight end instead of just going back to back. Uh, well, wide out, you know, running back. So I think I'm going to wait a little bit up in like the drive because there are some still some pretty good names here left. Um, some some guys that I'm really high upon. So no, absolutely. I uh, I definitely went with the 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 traditional way for now. I ended up taking Mike Evans. Okay. Um, okay. And so I can either on my next pick either look to solidify my flex spot or depending on what the tight ends are looking like. Um, I go. It's either Mark Andrews for me or hmm. it, it's still a lot of solid picks out here, man. We, we plenty of weapons for sure. I mean, it's either you could go and Andrews. I see a Logan Thomas and a Kyle Pitts down there as, as well. If you want to roll a dice up on the rookie, but true. Hmm. Man, I wish this guy hurry up and pick, man, because like I, I, I really want this wide receiver. I want to see if he's gonna still be there after all these auto picks, <laughs> which I mean, it's a good <laughs> chance that he may not be. And again, you know, uh, like the draft could turn out completely different if there was like real people here. So auto pick, only thing it does is you know just pick the best player available by number. So that isn't always you know the true thing in like a regular league when everyone is actually participating in a mock draft it'll go completely different correct and right now just from a common sense standpoint i'd be foolish foolish at this point not to take julio jones That's very how. foolish very foolish and uh, my players yep he was just picked i really 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 wanted cd lamb right here I think he's gonna have a great season. So we oh, got Galladay. Oh, oh, I'm I'm very high on, on CD because of um let's see here. Dak Prescott is back. So it's my pick. I really need to grab a, a wide receiver too at this point. So I'm just gonna go with a Tyler Lockett right here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh that oh that oh that's beautiful. Kyler Murray, come on here, buddy. <laughs> that is that is yes. All right, so we got Cook, got Gibson, yeah, Brown Evans, and Julio is a flex. My gosh. Wow, Julio is a flex. That's that is solid. Yeah. Once again, like you mentioned, with it being auto pick, I, I mm -hmm. doubt this actually happens. For sure. It, if it did, that means uh, people in your league don't know what they're doing, and that's fine because you'll take advantage of that. Um, you know what? I'm going to take Lamar Jackson. Ah, they took. I was getting ready to take Cal Pitts. They just took him. All right. So I mean, T.J. Hawkinson is there. Logan Thomas, who we're high on, he's there. Dallas Goddard, Tiny, fine. Uh, I think I'm gonna roll the dice. Let's see. Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna take the safe bag and take uh, TJ Hawkinson. Can't be mad at it. All right, so it looks like I got my starting quarterback, my RB one and two, wide receivers one and two, my tight end one. So it looks like I really need to shore up 
my flex spot and I can do it either one of two ways. I look and see who's the best player available from a both a wide receiver and a running back uh, perspective. I see some pretty good names out there like a Chase Claypool, Brandon Ayuk, guys of that nature as far as wide receivers go. But it's a lot of unproven running backs right here now. Travis Etienne and Edmonds of Fournette, who I really don't love. So for me, it's between Kareem Hunt and Mike Davis at this point. So I am going to go Hunt. I, I was like, I'm pretty sure I know who you're taking there. Yeah. I mean, it's my, it's my flex, so it's not typically like my starter. So – and again, I got another chance to go back and draft one of those players that I mentioned in Claypool and Ayuk. Both of them are still there. And I think that they'll put up, you know, like similar numbers. Um, but I am a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. So, <laughs> I mean, just come on. Come on on, Chase. I feel like the in a setting like this, um, I feel like the real draft starts in round eight. It does. But basically, you get, you get outside of your kicker and defense, you basically get your starters filled up already. So now it's like this is where the bread and butter, this is where people are separated in your league. Yeah. This is where leagues are won and lost, basically. We've seen it, we've seen it up on numerous occasions to where guys pick a guy like – a Justin Jefferson late or a Justin Herbert late and that propelled them into like some of like the top spots in their leagues. Indeed. So I'm going to take Raheem Moster. Um, Good reason, be- reason being the 49ers are a run heavy team. Um, they are very effective. Whoever is the guy, Raheem Moster is the guy. Raheem Moster, I think at one point was averaging over five yards of carry. The last time I seen him healthy, he he was definitely scoring touchdowns as well. So, and also the fact that running backs are scarce to begin with. So got that right. Got to sure that up. Um, man, still some solid picks. One of our uh, uh, our favorite uh, podcast favorite guys, Devontae Park, is still available. Yep, uh, that's who I was just looking at, bro. You know what? I'm going to take Devontae Smith. Mm. Corey Davis and Jess is pretty intriguing to me. Like it it does. Like, like that's one of those picks that it's like, mm, it's like a lot of value there. But I also see a rookie who I like. As far as wide receivers go, and it's looking like a rookie that I like as far as running backs go. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and look for Jalen Waddle right here, man. I'm gonna go ahead and pick him up. Nice, nice. All right, back on me again. This is pretty much where I'm going to. Let's see what my position, what my picks are, position limit. So it looks like I got one quarterback, three running backs, and four wide receivers. So I definitely want to draft another running back uh, for sure. Like you said, like running backs are very, very scarce. And again, um, James Robinson, man, it's it's crazy how far he fell. Um, I I get it. The addition of a Travis Etienne um, kind of will like, you know, cap him a little bit, but Yet and still is still intriguing to me. Also, Michael Michael Carter is there. Like I really like that pick as well. But I'm gonna go with the more sure thing for 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 the time being and go ahead and draft Robinson. Nice. And this part of the draft, like these running backs, I'm gonna grab a running back as well. I only have three, and so you have guys that have value here. And the only reason why these guys are this low is because somebody is sharing the backfield with them that's like you know limiting their 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 ceiling here. Mm-hmm. But you know, an injury away, you know, God forbid, but thing I mean it happens. So, you know, somebody gets injured, then one of these guys can definitely uh reach top ten territory, in my opinion. And so, you know, Melvin Gordon, he's solid there. I'm high on Believe it or not, Kenyon Drake in a Raiders uniform this year. Because from what I'm being told, from what I'm hearing, they they they're definitely gonna use him. 
in a lot of uh, wide receiver sets. So that's that's intriguing to me. So it's not just the backfield. He's going to get a lot of action uh, split out. So um, so I got four backs, uh, four wideouts. I don't necessarily need another tight end yet. There's still some solid names there. I am going to go Melvin Gordon. Okay. Ah, my pick was just picked. I'm going to go with a, a, a backup <laughs> champion here, man, with Matt Stafford, who I believe is going to have a fantastic season in L.A. That is a great pick. Don't, don't tell uh, – uh, Mr. Brandon Price, that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And now I am going to go with a uh, Naeem Hines. I, I definitely drafted um, Jonathan Taylor. And I mentioned it earlier about like the handcuff and running backs. They tend to get injured, just like you mentioned, Jamar. So no, you, you did the right thing. That was a smart play. Um. Hmm. AJ Dillon being like 123rd, that's a value pick. In my it, it really do. I was just about to ask you, like, how you feel about AJ Dillon. I've been hearing good things about him, and they are to uh, man, the monster. Yeah, I'm gonna take. Um, let me see what's my position. Um, I'm gonna take Johnny Smith. So we got two tight ends. I'm gonna go ahead and take Matt Ryan. Ooh, talk about value. What where round are we in? 13? 13. My goodness. And he's he's in our top 10 right yes. now. Yes, he is. And I don't understand why he's so low. I, I, I don't get it because, for one, team is trash, so they always going to be playing from behind. Two, as I mean, I know Julio's still on the team, and we don't expect him to be, but even if Julio isn't on the team, you still got Calvin Ridley. <laughs> you got Cal Pitts, man. Like, this dude's going to put up numbers. All right, so what you thinking here? Uh, this is where I'm gonna pick like a defense, and far be it for me to not pick my own. I'm gonna say, what, what, what type of fan are you? If you did, what type man? of fan would I be, man? All right, so round fourteen. And I mean, we Jamar, we've seen some crazy things happen. We've seen, you know, players getting picked number one overall who ain't have no business being picked number one overall that could have went in like the third round. We've seen kickers go as early as like the sixth round and, and things of that nature. Bruh. Defense is going super early. So sometimes Bruh. only thing you need is one uh bad pick to make your to make your draft, you know. From 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 uh, someone else that is not a bad pick from yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, I, I like the disclaimer right there. That was a nice disclaimer. Um, yeah, we we've we've witnessed some 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 uh, uh, some blasphemous picks, some tomfoolery, some <laughs> some really head scratching picks before in in the top spot. Um, <laughs> it's like I have a few that I that that's on the tip of my tongue. That I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna not mention it, but it, it was definitely some ones. It was like, 
like that that little silence yeah that's that's how it was for real <laughs> it was that bad no for real i'm not gonna bring up no name fred <laughs> <laughs> See, I, yeah, I was shout nice out to it. my guy, man. Shout out to my guy. Love, love my guy, bro. <laughs> I was nice about it. I guess the challenge was like, nah, nah, <laughs> man. It. Had to call him out, man. I definitely need a wide receiver here, but it's like I'm really not liking the name. So I'm just gonna go with like one of those. I'll go with Elijah Moore. Solid. Let's see, kicker. Basically, which offense is going to put up a lot of points here? Uh, oh, Matt Prater with the cards? Why not? So, I like my team. Don't love it. Really, really like it. Felt like I could have did some things better, but still a very – oh, my God. Okay, we got Dalvin Cook, A.J. Brown. Antonio, three TD Gibson, Mike <laughs> Evans, Julio. See, that's crazy. Yo, why go up, slide up a little bit? That wide receiver is ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Like I'm, I'm, I'm loving that. So, Mike Evans, Julio Jones, AJ Brown. These are all elite wide receivers, by the way. <laughs> My gosh. Like, if I rolled out this roster week one of a fantasy league, uh, I'm, I'm feeling really good about myself. As you should. Oh, man, look at that Matt Ryan pick. Round 13. Come on, people. Only thing this dude do, like, like they're not even a running team. Only thing they do is throw the ball 40 times a game. Matt Ryan's going to get his no matter who's on the roster. He's, he's going to sling it. So hopefully he kind of slides up a little bit in the drive. People come to the real realization like, hey, it's Matt Ryan. He can throw for 5,000 yards any given season if he's healthy. Man, you are absolutely correct. So we're going to do another one here. Uh, so, like, do you still have your team up by chance or no? I do. Yeah, I do. Run, run us through it and just like basically like what was your mindset with each pick really quick while I get this set up. Okay. So I don't have it in order, okay. but um, I got Kyler Murray, enough said. Jonathan Taylor, I just think that he's going to be a, a very good back. He showed that he is a true uh, RB1 and he is a force to be reckoned with. J.K. Dobbins is one of those upcoming guys, and I actually got him inside our keeper league, Jamar which I'm very, very excited about. So that takes the pressure off of me from, you know, having to worry about drafting a true RB2. Um, uh, Stephon Diggs, again, enough said. Tyler Lockett is a very reliable wide receiver. Uh, two, Darren Waller, elite tight end. Flex, Kareem Hunt, we already know what he can do. Um, elite defense, uh, fantasy-wise, Steelers, elite kicker. And um, Justin Tucker, um, Chase Claypool, Young guy, uh, Jalen Waddle again. Young guy, James Robinson, again another young guy. Um, Matt Stafford there again. I I really think he's gonna have a very very good year with LA. Naeem Hines was my handcuff for Jonathan Taylor. Um, Hunter Henry, I think you picked his um, running mate in Jonu Smith. And you know with the you know the later pick in the draft, you will always want to go with like a rookie. Especially if it's like we're talking like a, a keeper league or anything, or someone who can fly up under the radar, and I've drafted Elijah Moore. Nice. Yeah, right, that is solid. I just sent you the link for the next mock draft. All right, so I'm gonna That's switch it up, Jamar. I'm 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 gonna pick in like the earlier portion of the draft if I am able. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're we're still good here. Um, I guess what slot do you want? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with one. What the heck? What the heck? You good? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So I went on the opposite end. So we both going to have the turn on this one. All right. So. So, yeah, that was definitely, uh, you know, and like I said, if, if that if that holds true, which I don't expect at all, but if For I was sure. able to get that, then yeah, I I I feel like I'm going to the ship. That's yeah, I mean it's one of those be afraid, be very afraid type things when you see someone that you got to play with that roster, and it's like 
you know, some weeks like you have those weeks like, yes, man, I really need to play this guy. But it's some people that you definitely want to avoid, Jamar. And that team would be one of them, knowing the caliber of those wide receivers that you have and everyone's ability to be able to put up points. And you snagged a Lamar Jackson to couple that with, oh, man, like that's just a daily combination, bro. So, yeah, if, if that team were to hold true, it'll definitely be one of like the scarier ones inside the league. Absolutely. And and so everybody knows we have a free uh, fantasy football strategy guide, a PDF download for you all. Um, the link will be uh, on our Facebook page, on our personal pages, also on the Destination Fantasy Facebook page, basically on our social media, also uh, on YouTube as well. Once this is, uh, you know, once this is out, so. Like I said, a free guy, um, just a quick sign up, just your name and email, and it's all yours. Courtesy of the Destination Fantasy Podcast. And yeah, so, so it, it's looking like we got five out of ten slots filled with actual people so far. So still got two minutes left. Hopefully we can get about two more in there, and it'll really feel legit. Yeah, I'm trying to get some uh, some guys in our uh, sports chat group to, uh, to participate as well, so – yeah, the more humans, the better. That's what we want. For sure. But yeah, it's it's if you were to, you know, break down the makeup of both the teams that we drafted, Jamar, I think you can fairly say that it was pretty balanced, right? As far as talent at every position that we had. And that's, you know, typically what you want to go for. Like, you don't want to be like lopsided. I've seen so many teams that were you know, like, oh, man, like they got a very good set of quarterbacks or they got a very good set of running backs, but their wide receivers are terrible. So you definitely want to try to give a little bit more balance and, you know, you'll have, you know, more points scored along multiple positions than just a bunch of points being scored at one position like running back or wide receiver. So Absolutely. So, you know, there's definitely a lot of things, to, uh, you know, take into consideration. Uh, I think one of the and you touched on this, I think, a couple of times already. One of the most overlooked aspects, but which is critical, is looking for, you know, making sure you're, you know, aware of the bye week situation. Yes. I cannot stress that enough. I remember in a – so at one of my previous jobs, it was a 14-team league. Uh, I, was only, I was only at that job for like a year. And so 14-team league and – that was the first time I really did one of those. And so the quarterback situation, which, you know, in 14 teams, it, it can get it can get sketchy if, <laughs> very. You're, if you're not uh, doing what you're supposed to do. But uh, unfortunately for me at the time, I was not paying attention. I will look the fact that uh, that both my quarterbacks had the same body. And that, that was a no-no. And so, I mean, I, I was definitely hurt for a second. Um, but – I mean, the the I guess after the storm, the sunshine, the 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 pot at the end of the rainbow. I, I did end up winning the league, but but still, like like don't make it hard on yourself for something you can control. That's one of the things you can control. Yep. So definitely, definitely be be aware of that. Hey, it looks like we got. It. it was it was just ten out of ten out of ten, but. Oh, now it's nine out of ten. Someone like jumped out, but I'll take it. Nine out of ten real people. Let's 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 roll. And again, this is like one of those things to where it's like, you know, people don't you know like like stand stand like the draft all the way through. They just want to at least fill up their like starters and just like see what that uh you know. See what right. that looks like, and then they typically just leave leave the draft. So we'll see how long it is. And again, it's still quite a bunch of auto picks, so I don't know. The one was filled up. Just wait. I guess it's just more so waiting on them to join the draft. At this oh, point. okay. But yeah, um, boy, I, I I am definitely the more and more I'm on draft, the more I am excited. To <laughs> Starting to feel like Christmas again, man. <laughs> and so. And, and all actuality, I'm like the the biggest thing I am like excited for is our dynasty league that <laughs> we're starting. 
that that is the the number one thing I'm looking forward to this off season. I feel like everything else is just great, but but this one here, I feel like this one's definitely gonna be a test for both of us. Oh, oh, big time. It's like uh, you know, I think we got so comfortable doing what we're doing, winning multiple leagues and you know, making our presence felt in something that we've been in like for so long i mean you do get like a little bit complacent jamar and you want to be able to spread your rings and to be able to do different things and you know i i think this is like one of those times where it's like hey man we get a little bit too comfortable like let's go ahead and ahead and you know do something out of the norm and like that's where like the dynasty league is and it's it's more so of like it like i am nervous but it's more like an anxiousness as well, knowing that, um, you know, in like the early going, like you can have a terrible team and you're going to have that terrible team for quite a while if you don't make like the right decision. So um, I'm definitely excited about that. And I'm a little bit nervous at the same time in your first go around. And I mean, who wouldn't be? You just got to do, you know, properly do like your research and, um, you know, make sure you're doing the right things out there to have a com competitive team for years to come. Absolutely. So we're about 35 seconds away from our second mock draft of the day. Um, once again, uh, you have the number one pick, so you will be setting the tone of the draft. Yep. Uh, I'm on the opposite end. I got 10. I'm the first person between me and you with the with the turnaround. So I guess we're going to see what happens. Looks like one, two, three, four, five is in the draft lobby right now. Nine people joined out of ten, so let's see if these people actually show up or not. All right, man. Yep, a lot of people are gonna hate me for this, but I am still riding with my guy. Of I'm going Dalvin are. Cook number one overall. Uh, of course. I mean, at at this point right now, Jamar, I've done a, a few mock drafts, some some with you. Uh, some on my own, and I do have a preference in where I like to pick. Um, and the front of the draft isn't one of them. Um, I pick the best teams, believe it or not, anywhere between um, eight and ten. So if I had my place on where to pick, it'll probably be eight, nine, or ten this year. Gotcha. I know in years past, I do have a preference. This year, I, I don't know yet. And honestly, mm -hmm. I don't know if I will have one. I just, I mean, I feel like there's more than one, uh, more than one solution here based oh, on for sure. how it's all aligning. So, oh man, this happens. And again, it's still early. It may change. It may change. Oh, boy, decisions, decisions. Yes, you do have a decision. You can go with an elite top, basically wide receiver. You can wait for it to go back around and draft the running back that you already want, considering that that wide receiver is probably going to be gone back time your time gets mm -hmm. around because it is an auto pick there. Or you can just go with a solid running back who I see his name right now. Not going to mention, I'm going to see if you're going to still pick this guy. Yep. Okay. Smart. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's right. You do got the back-to-back -back picks. Okay, I thought you were picking eighth. Oh, no. Oh, boy. This is tough. Like, these, these are some, some good names. This, like, yep. being at, at the turn like this, like, like, this is, being at the turn is, is one of the uh good pick bro good pick out of those out of those guys that were left that was in my opinion that was like the only option that was the only option so kudos thank you it was either that or go tyree kill and just have a dominant wide receiver core but my running back's gonna be shot by the time i come back around exactly. so so here here's the thing about here's my I, ideology about reaching right so mm -hmm. Normally, if you are, if you, you know, you're drafting, you want other guys to reach. So they, they reach for somebody that 
that for a fact they could have gotten later rounds, you know, that just ups your value of your team if you draft correctly. But I would say the exception to the rule is if you are on the turns, it is okay for you to reach <laughs> a little bit for the guy that you want. That, that's that, that's how I feel about the turn, especially in deeper leagues on the turns. Like you, you have to reach. All right, what are you thinking here? Uh, let me see. Running back. Okay, so <clears throat> my first two picks was Diggs and Chubb. Your first pick was uh, Dalvin Cook. And then you just took Antonio Gibson, so your running backs are solidified. So I'm assuming you're going white out here. And I, wow, there's three, shoot, four, five, five. five. Yeah, yeah. Five. like take your pick, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. And this is like the problem. Like, man, uh, the only thing that I can't do right here, I mean, I could go with like a Justin Jefferson, but I already got a Dalvin Cook. Like, I really don't want too many. Seven AJ Brown, DJ Metcalf, uh, DK Metcalf. Rather, I'm gonna just go ahead and go pick DK. And again, like it was just like I had options there, bro. I had Thank options. You. So, kudos to you for going ahead and solidifying your starting running back places already. I mean, get that out the way to uh, dual threats one elite, <laughs> one on the cusp of being in that top tier for sure. So, and then you gotta. Uh, a monster of a human being at wide receiver. So. <laughs> yeah, basically got a tight end playing wide receiver there. So, yeah. Ooh, good pick. A-Rob just get left, left the board. I think I'm going to try something crazy here. Okay. Depends on, on what these guys pick here. It depends what they do. Oh, man, I'm anxious. Yeah, I know. It's like you got to wait and see who these guys are going to pick. Like, come on, man. Like, I'm ready for my okay. turn to come back. All right. I'm about to try something crazy. Okay. I see what you're going to go with. All right. So this is very unconventional, but it may pay dividends down the line. Ooh. Ooh, we double tight end. Talk about paying, paying, paying dividends. It should, it should, it should. So, two, there, there's three tight ends that I would do like that, and two of them are I, I took, and the other one's Travis Kelsey. Because there's no way I would take two tight ends that early if it wasn't between Waller, Kittle, and Kelsey. There's no way. But just, just from my perspective, I, I get. An elite tight end, and I get an elite flex play. And also, on top of that, I, I take away, I take away a, a tight end from somebody in the league mm -hmm. on a position that's very scarce. So as long as they're healthy, like I feel like that that will pay off. And again, like sometimes it's you know it's chess, not checkers, and sometimes you got to play the keep away game, bro. Absolutely. So I'm I'm very curious to see how this is gonna pan out for me overall, but we'll we'll see. I actually got both Pat Mahomes and Josh Allen sitting there. Wow. And the thing of it is okay, so I don't have okay. I took digs in like the last one. I would have definitely took Josh Allen over Patrick Mahomes. I'm gonna go with Patrick Mahomes. Patty. Whew, I can do either one or two things. I kind of need to go for a tight end here because typically, or I could. Ugh, uh, okay. I, 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 Let's I do this. Know. I still do need a wide receiver, too, though. If somehow, some way, Josh Allen falls to me. <laughs> Boy, oh boy! I'm gonna go CD Lamb, man. Like I, I don't, I, I, I don't know why I'm, I'm gonna go CD though. Like I had, I dude, I had Mike, Mike Evans sitting there, Chris Godwin, Julio Jones. 
like I had some really good picks, but I just went, I went, I went CD. I mean, hey, and that goes to, to what I said. Being at the turn is okay for you to reach for the guy that you want. Because normally he's not gonna come back around because it, it takes it's too many picks in between. Yep. So, the fact that Julio is going in round five right now, that's insane to me. It really is. Now I get it. Julio does have an issue with getting inside like the red zone. You and and you and you know I understand that because it seems like I pick him every year. <laughs> he was on your bus, man. He man, he was up on my bus team, man. Yes, yes, yes. He he, he was, but you cannot deny a talent in round five. Jamar, like there's no if he's gonna get a thousand yards whenever he's healthy and a minimum of five touchdowns. I I I feel like so. Um, I don't know if he's gonna end up on like a different team or what the issue there will be. So. True. Uh, huh. What do you know? Josh Allen. Uh, uh, uh. All right. So I immediately need to get a running back here. Uh. <laughs> yeah, what? This is wild. Wait, I'm going to do it. You so you got both Hunt and uh, I've done that, I've done that, bro. Oh my God, Kyler is gone. I had to, I had to take Patty though, bro. Like I had to take him. Like he was sitting there. I'm like ah, like this is. I swear, what I'm doing is so unconventional right now, but it it feels natural to a sense, and it, it goes back to what I said. There's it's more than one way. It's more than one right answer to the solution, <laughs> you know, to, to the problem. I mean, to fix the problem or whatever the situation is. There's multiple avenues to travel here to get to your destination. Yep. So what do you think? You liking your team so far? I am. I, uh, so I need another... So basically, I just need to fill up my skill positions here. I, I definitely need another running back because and another wide out, and we eventually need another quarterback because I had a ch uh, Chubb and Hunt who, uh, you know, same team, so they got the same bye week. Same thing with uh, Diggs and Allen, but it's like you definitely want that uh, that connection there. That uh, and I, I can't even think of the term, but you know what I'm talking about. The, uh, uh, you know, the combo type thing. Right. Because you can always do the quarterback with a wide out normally, quarterback with a tight end, quarterback with a running back, depending on, you know, the running back. And then the other flip side that maybe some people don't know about is the running back and the defense. Because that can go hand in hand too. All right, so we are coming up on the turn round seven, starting round eight. All right, so I am at this point looking for players with upside, with yep. a lot of upside. Ceiling is like can be almost or just as high as your elite guys. That's what that's what you want. So first person I see on the radar with that, I'm gonna go with, you know, uh, James Robinson. I mean, he was spectacular last year. All right, so I definitely have a hole here at wide out, and there is still some some excellent names here. So here's my dilemma: like Anderson, Claypool, like they're they're good, but. They have the same bye weeks as everybody else on my team. I can't do it. That's so, smart. That's smart that you checked that. The next best thing for me would be Brandon Ayuk. Ah, I wanted him. I was definitely going to pick him because I picked Claypool before. It just seemed like round eight is where you're going to, like you said, like uh, like round seven and eight are like where you're going to pick those guys who can potentially uh, like sneak up into like your – RB2 or your wide receiver two, uh, like positions, if need be. 
guys with that type of upside. So, so yeah, I have, and even with that IU pick, I have George Kittle on the team, so I, I kind of picked the guys with the same bye week, but I got two guys with bye week six, two guys with bye week seven, two guys with bye week 13. So, matter of fact, I got three guys with bye week seven. So, at this point, I am looking for guys who have high upside and who has different bye weeks than the rest of these guys. I have to. Otherwise, I'm going to be screwed like multiple weeks in the, in the season. I can't afford that. All right, so Deshaun is on the clock here. In fact, let's uh, pull up Deshaun's team. Right so just so people know, Deshaun has Patrick Mahomes, Dalvin Cook, Antonio Gibson, DK Metcalf, CD Lamb, Cal Pitts, Raheem Mostert. That is solid. That is solid. That is solid. And Chase Claypool. Yeah, right now I'm kind of stuck. Kind of stuck who I'm trying to pick here. I'm definitely going to – I think I need to go back considering that. Well, I don't technically have to, but I am going to go back here. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to pick James. James Conner. Mm-hmm. Rolling the dice here. I'm definitely rolling the dice. I still have some pretty good names up there. Melvin Gordon the III, um, Michael Carter. Um, Kenyon, Kenyon Drake, who you like a lot, uh, Jamar. So it was definitely between one of those uh, guys for me. Let's see. So, <clears throat> all right. So with my pick coming up here, I only got three running backs on the roster and two wide receivers. But as you know, wide receivers come a dime a dozen, so I'm not too concerned about that. As you shouldn't be. And you got to also bring up the point where you picked two elite tight ends that can actually play the wide receiver position for you, basically. So Correct. that kind of cancels that um, empty spot of you uh, not picking a wide receiver there. Yeah. So it's like I can definitely, if I wanted to, I, I could take two running backs right now just to – you know, matter of fact, I think that's what I'm going to do just to make sure I have depth there because I, I went, you know, quite a while without my second running back who's the handcuff to my first running back who has – both of them has great value. So it's like good situation there. Um, Let me ask you this, Jamar. Is that the only tandem in the league that you can actually start every week? Because Kareem Hunt is a lot to be a flex every – Single week, even though he is the RB two on the team. Um, I think so. The only other one that I can think of right now, hmm, may maybe maybe Indianapolis, maybe. Okay, with uh Taylor and uh, Hines, yeah, correct. Um, okay. But there's also uh, – let's take Michael Carter here with Drake. So Good pick. All right. So there there are others that has potential for that, like the Raiders between Jacobs, who I feel like is a running back two and will finish as a running back two. That's his ceiling at this point. But I feel like Kenyon Drake may have some value. Depends if they do what they say they're going to do and get him the ball – you know, split out amongst with the the rushing yards he may get. I mean, he he can be a solid, like a solidified flex option too. That's that's one tandem that I can see. Um, you know, another one I would probably throw out there is uh, Jacksonville with uh, Etn and Robinson. Okay. I mean, I, mean I, I feel like they they like Etn a lot, and we already know what James Robinson does. I guess it's just more so what the scheme is for Urban Meyer and how the utilization they use them. But I would say this is a plus. I mean, they don't really have too many wideouts to throw to besides uh, Marvin Jones and uh, DJ Chark. So the possibility that the running backs are used heavily in that offense again. Andre Parker is a round ten. Hmm. 
All right, so I see you got Matthew Stafford again. I see he's going around round 10. Yep. T.Y. Hilton, the resurgence with Carson Wentz? Possibly. Maybe, possibly, and that was where I picked him. I was basically stuck between Cole Beasley, who I like a lot, and uh, T.Y., who are almost basically the same type of player. Much. Pretty much. It's kind. Of, it's kind of crazy to think how far Ty has fell, though. Like seriously, that's because of uh, <laughs> Philip Rivers. <laughs> I think just because of he is notorious for spreading the ball out a lot around, spread, and then especially dumping it off the running backs. Dumping off to the running backs. Yep. He will sidearm to the running back all day if he had to. <laughs> In that order. You know what? I'm going to roll the dice here. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I'm going to roll the dice and try uh, Kadarius Tony. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. What What made you do that? Well, for one, they it was really high on the guy mm-hmm. um, to begin with. And I know they have a lot of pass catches, but he, he seems like the, the Swiss Army knife of the, of the bunch. So he might be utilizing different uh, different things. So might be some upside there. Um, let me see. Got three wideouts. Uh, these guys are all one and the same at this point. I really like Lux, but... Uh, Man, he's due for a breakout year, man. Like, uh, my tight end just got picked. Mm. Let's see who we got left for wide outs. Pittman, Ruggs, Big Mike Williams for wide receivers. Trace Sermon, Zach Moss. So it's looking like it's going to be a wide receiver. Right now, they got better names. Uh, I'm gonna go with rugs. Solid. Speed, speed guy. So so far, I mean, looking pretty good. Patrick Mahomes, Dalvin Cook, Antonio Gibson, DK Metcalf, CD Lamb, Kyle Pitts. Um, Raheem Mostert, Chase Claypool, James Conner, Matthew Stafford, T.Y. Hilton, John o. Smith, and Henry Ruggs. That's pretty That's pretty good. Agreed. Agreed. Let me go ahead and check your team real quick. You all the way down there. Josh Allen, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, Stephon Diggs, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, <laughs> Darren Waller. Oh, my gosh. Oh, 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 oh. Dude, that is, that is insane. James Robinson, King and Drake, Michael Carter. You are very RB heavy, and there is a lot of upside as far as your uh, running backs go. It's like you are deep. Oh man! So just picked up McCall Hardman and Matt Ryan. Uh... Matt Ryan again. <laughs> oh boy. Insane, bro. Hey. I love it if they don't, even if they don't like it, I love it. I hate Sony Michelle, man. Let me not use the word hate. I dislike Sony Michelle a <laughs> lot. Hit on, that, on, on, on your bus. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. 
Yeah. Let's go with a little, a little, a little handcuff action. I did draft uh Dalvin Cook, right? So let me go ahead and pick Alexander Madison. Just to be on the safe side. All right, now round 15. See what defense is available. Man, Bucks are still there. Man, they project them to get 140 points. My goodness. I know they're good. I I, I can't see 140 points, but I, I know they're good. I mean, the crazy thing about it is my Steelers scored 147 last year. So I'm gonna I'm gonna still go with go with my guys up over there. Man, coach defense was elite last year. It was very good, bro. Dolphins was actually solid too. Saints was. Football yeah, so was. you definitely got some got some good options there for sure. Football team got one of those scary front lines, dude. It's like, man. Yeah, and that's that's one I throw with. Yes, uh, go ahead and, uh, yep. All right. So, I definitely did a very uh, unconventional thing, but I think it, I think it panned out well. I think, I think so too. And again, so go, who are your wide receivers? So, you got Stefan Diggs, and who is your wide receiver too, basically? Uh, Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk. So, that's extremely solid, right? Yes. But again, you got to keep in mind, you got two elite tight ends, like elite. So it's only three, basically. It's only three elite tight ends. So you got the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Travis Kelsey. You got um, George Kittle and Darren Waller. And you got two of the top three tight ends. And both of those guys are basically wide receivers. Over a thousand yards is going to be for both those guys as long as they're healthy in a minimum of seven touchdowns apiece, a minimum. So that was a very, very good strategy. And it and again, it seemed like it paid off dividends. You got Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, which is fantastic. I cannot say enough good things about those guys. I have had both of those guys in, in a numerous amounts of leagues, and you can legit start them both on any given like Sunday. Yes, so they're, they're both prone to score. <laughs> both prone to go over 100 yards. So rounding out the rest of your team, James Robinson, Brandon Ayuk, Kenyon Drake, Michael Carter. I like the list of running backs that you have, my guy. Uh, McCole Hartman late in the draft is a, is a good pick. Um, <laughs> Matt Ryan, again, well done. And, again, we said it last time in, like, the last draft. Matt Ryan is one of those players that we have in our top ten, and this guy is going late. So definitely be out on the lookout to kind of, you know, swindle the people around you and be like, Okay, I'm about to just like steal this guy from right up under someone's noses because you know the production is going to be extremely solid from that guy. And that late, that may be the value pick of any draft this year. Absolutely. So yeah, I'm I'm happy. I, I would be happy rolling out week one with this lineup. Oh, I would that by far. Uh how is your lineup? All right, so I got Patrick Mahomes, uh QB1, obviously, that da- uh Dalvin Cook, Q uh RB2. Um Antonio Gibson, RB, RB2, uh, DK Metcalf, CD Lamb, Kyle Pitts, Raheem Mostert at the flex, Steelers defense, Tyler Bass as a kicker. Again, you want a team that's going to score a lot of points. I think Buffalo is going to be one of those. Tyler Bass was terrific last year. Chase Claypool on the bench. His uh, ex-teammate, James Conner, Matthew Stafford, T.Y. Hilton, John o. Smith, Henry Rugs and my handcuff to Dalvin Cook, which is Alexander Madison. So I like my team as well. It's a very well-rounded team, and I think I can win some games with this roster. I think so too. I, I think we did uh two excellent drafts today. For sure. Uh, 
So yeah, I, I think this concludes our draft strategies part one. Uh, next time we're gonna get more in depth with uh, with your per personal favorites, uh, dual quarterbacks. Yep. Uh, super flex, which could be used as a dual quarterback league as well. Might even sprinkle in a little dynasty that we're trying to get into. Uh, more mock draft in here. So, so yeah, I I'm excited. Uh, before we close out, man, where can they find us? Man, you can find us any and everywhere where podcasts are available. We're here, as you see on the ticker down there, Apple Pod, Spotify, Pandora, even Amazon Music. You search it, <laughs> we're there, Destination Fantasy. We are streaming live right now on Facebook as well as um, YouTube. Definitely make sure you check out like the YouTube channel. If you like what you if you like what you see, the content that we are giving you guys, make sure you press that uh, like button and uh, ding that notification bell. It definitely will notify you whenever me and my brother are going live. Absolutely. Uh, just to add to that, um, we are now on iHeartRadio as well. <laughs> <laughs> and the list just keeps growing, bro. Love it. Indeed. And um, and then also, like I mentioned earlier, we have a free, free, free 99, free 99 fantasy football strategy guide at your disposal. It will The link will be up on my Facebook page. I'm going to give it to you so you can be, be put it on your Facebook page, the Destination Fantasy Facebook page, uh, this YouTube channel, basically anywhere on social media. It will be there free, completely free. We want, you know, we want to, you know, help as many people out as we can, you know, get them prepped for draft season. Um, how I like to put it, uh, fantasy, your fantasy, like success is broken down in three components. Drafting is the biggest component of the three. The other two is uh, waiver wire and you setting your lineups. So that's how I break it down personally for me. And so drafting is the main component and we want to give out free resources to help you succeed. And so you can be champion like like we are so so yeah be on the lookout for that that is uh coming up uh asap you'll see that link asap but uh but yeah next week uh part two and uh we will go from there because uh we'll be in june and mock draft season is underway i'm pretty sure deshaun's gonna do about 100 mock drafts uh 101. This summer. 101. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah we 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 in there so all right y'all so we will uh, see you all next week. For my brother Deshaun, this is Jamar, Destination Fantasy Podcast. We will see you all next week. Peace out.